All right, back with chapter 58. It talks about true and false fasting. It says this. It says, cry aloud, cry aloud, do not hold back. But look at your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their transgression or their sins. To the house of Jacob, their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight and delight to know my ways, as if they as if they were a nation that did not, that did righteousness and did not forsake the judgment of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why have we fast? Why have we fasted and you see it not? Why have we humbled ourselves and you take no knowledge of it? Behold, in the day of your fast you seek your own pleasure, and oppress all your workers. Behold, you fast only to quarrel and to fight, and to hit with the wicked fist. Fasting like yours this day will not make your voice to be heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day for a person to humble himself? Is it to bow down his head like a reed, and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will you call this a fast, and a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to lose the, to loose the bonds of the wickedness, to undo the straps of the yoke, to let the, to let, to let the oppressed go free, and break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, and bring the homeless poor into your house, when you see the naked to cover him, and not to hide yourself from your own flesh? Then shall your light break forth like the, like the dawn, and your healing shall spread or shall spring up speedily. Your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall call, or you shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger and speaking wickedness, if you pour yourself out for the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then shall your light rise in the, in the darkness and your gloom be as the noonday. And the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your desire in scorched places and make your bones strong. And you will be like a watered garden, like a spring of water, whose waters do not fill. And your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt, and you shall raise up the foundations of many generations. Shall be called the, you, should, you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to dwell in. If you turn back your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on, on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, and the holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it, not going your own ways, or seeking your own pleasure, or talking idly, then you shall take delight in the Lord, and I will make you and I will make you ride on the heights of the earth. I will feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So God's telling Israel, look, if you're truly going fast, do it, do it the right way, do it out of humbleness, you know, do it, you know, do it by by serving God most of the, most of all, and, and and serving others, you know, um, and, and and worship God in truth, you know, uh, you know, it's kind of like don't call yourself a Christian. You know, but yet you're going out and and partying, getting drunk, and all this other stuff. But yeah, you're going, but yet you're going to church on Sundays, praising God, singing to God. But yet inside, you're so wicked and and sinful and just you're you're disgusting. I mean, you are. When God looks upon you, and and you're going out and doing this stuff, and yet you come into God's holy house to worship Him, but yet you're going out and doing sinful things. Your 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 worship is nothing to God. You're not you're nothing to God. Cause like how dare you call yourself a Christian? Yet you're going out and doing these things. Yet the, yet the next day, you you can go to church and praise God. Yet your life has no evidence of your faith. I mean, truly, I mean that's just honest truth. So like, how can you, how can you call yourself a Christian? Yet you're going out and and you know living in sin, sleeping around with people. You know, you're going out getting drunk. You know. You, you doing all this simple stuff. Yeah, on Sunday mornings you'll you'll be at church praising God, you know. But yet, when one church is over with, you you'll go right back to your sins. God doesn't take no pleasure in that. And when he looks upon you, he doesn't honor your worship. He he actually disdains it. He hates your worship, unless you repent of, of, of the crap you're doing and turn and turn back and turn back to God and live your life for right for Him. He will never accept your worship because your worship is false. Just like right here, false fasting. Your worship is false. You don't mean it. If you truly mean it, if you truly mean it, you'd be, you'd be going out truly living for God. You won't be, you know, being a false. You won't be. You won't be being a false Christian. You would, be, you would truly go out and live your life right for Christ, and not be going out and doing things foolishly. And that's just 100% truth. But yeah, um, 
that's what we're talking about here about true and false fasting. You know, if you're, if you're, if you're truly worship God, worship Him, worship Him truthfully. Don't be going out, like I said, and, and, and getting drunk and partying and all this stuff. Be out Sunday morning, we'll be out praising God. Yet, your life has no evidence of your faith, and your life has no evidence of your of your salvation. Really, you 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 have nothing. All you're doing is saying you're a Christian. Yeah, you're going out. You're going out. You know, and partying, getting drunk, drunk, and all this other stuff. But yet, your life shows no fruit of, of your salvation. Um, and, and your and your worship of God is, is fake. I mean, you're because you, cause you're a fake Christian. You're not. You're not a true Christian. And your worship of God is fake. You don't. You don't mean it. Because if you truly meant it, you'd be going out living your life right for God, and you won't be going out doing the stuff that you know God hates. Uh, like I said, when you worship God. When you falsely worship him, he actually hates your worship. He actually looks upon you and sees the disgusting crap you're doing. He doesn't accept your worship. He he actually disdains that he hates your worship. Because you're not worshiping in truth. You're worshiping in falseness. You know, if you, if you want God to accept your worship, and, and if you if you truly want to worship God, you need to repent of your sins, believe your life for Christ, and wholeheartedly look for him, and give and, and give and give Christ everything I and mean, just totally just you know do it like, like I say you, when you worship God and, and you live for Christ you know you do it out of your whole heart not 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 a, not a part of your heart you do, you do it out of your, your out of your heart you know you uh, you, whole, you wholeheartedly do it because you, do, you love God you don't, you don't halfway do it or partially do it you truly love God you're going to live for him daily you want to return your sins and you're going to love God and you're, to, and you're going to hate sin. So that's just the honest truth. So if you're sure going to worship God, do it in truth and not do it falsely. Um, and truly repent of your sins and live your life in Christ. That's number 58 about true and false fasting. I'm about 59 here shortly.